thank you. Hello, everyone. We are here to celebrate um, uh, the World Logic Day. Uh, it's part of our efforts to um, popularize um, the connection between logic and religion. And we chose for today's session, we, is, we wanted to do something different. We want to do a round table with um, uh, a couple of speakers as well as us as um, a few of the executive, the members of the executive board. So uh, today we have um, uh, Professor Agni um, from Gat University uh, in Belgium. We have Anand uh, from San Jose State University um, here in the United States. We have Janives um, from uh, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Uh, we also have Marcin from University of Warsaw in Poland. Um, we also have uh, uh, Professor Stem um, from University of Warsaw in Poland as well. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the University of Missouri in the United States. I'll be also speaking as well as chairing the session. And we also have uh, Caroline Ting from Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. I believe she's also in China right now. Um, so, I'm just grateful for everyone who is participating here, who is attending. And after everyone speaks, which will uh, take about five minutes for each speaker, um, we also have we have some time for interaction with the audience. So I'll, let me start by asking Janice to, uh, um, to come in. Please, Janice, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Asis. So I'm glad to be here to uh, for this special session of the of the first session of the year of the Logic and Religion uh, webinar. And um, we will start this year uh, with the celebration of the World Logic Day. Uh, I will not tell all the story about the World Logic Day. Here I'll put on the chat, uh, the, with, uh, we did an interview with Caroline explaining all the detail of this day. And it has been translated up to now in 13 languages. More languages are coming soon. Uh, for us, it's important to have this in uh, many different languages. Because even if uh, nowadays, as we are here today, people uh, communicate in English, I think the specificity of all languages uh, is important. And this is also part of our project about religion, because we think even if we want uh, the main goal of our project is to make connection between all different religions, uh, based on rationality, <laughs> that's the idea of uh, logic and religion. But at the same time, we uh, support the specificity of all uh, different uh, religion, and uh, as a different religion are also using uh, different uh, languages. So I will put here also on the link uh, on the chat the link uh, to a paper. Uh, telling the story, uh, the start of this project of logic and religion. So everybody also can have a look at that. So the World Logic Day uh, is uh, the January 14th of each year. This is the sixth edition. Sixth edition this year, we start uh, in uh, 2019. And the, the Logic Day, the World Logic Day was recognized in the, the same year uh, by UNESCO. And we are glad uh, with this recognition. And now we want to go on, uh, in particular, to have this uh, day recognized also by the United Nations. I mean, in the calendar of the United Nations. So the idea is to promote logic in all its aspects, uh, the, the idea of the logic day. And one of its aspects is a connection uh, between uh, logic and religion which is part of this project. And there are many uh, different connections between logic and religion. The most famous, uh, of course, is a proof of existence of God. And um, But there are also a lot of uh, aspects which are more related with the conceptualization, not only proof, but about conceptualization. And uh, to understand uh, in which sense uh, Face is based on rationality, or uh, on the other way around, if uh, to develop uh, 
if we to develop rationality uh, reasoning in all its aspects it is good to have some uh religious uh i'd say religious inspiration so i think we have to see the two sides of this uh, of this relation not only one side and i think it's important because uh, many uh, famous mathematician philosopher where their work were, was much influenced by uh, religion we can give a lot of different examples and we want to develop uh, in this project of logic and religion we want to develop this interaction this continuous interaction so we organized uh, last year in uh, Sinaya, the fourth edition of the World Congress on Logic and Religion. It was a very nice meeting. And we are project, uh, maybe Hano, we see, uh, uh, we'll speak a bit about that. We have the project to, to organize the next edition of this uh, World Congress on Logic and Religion in California in uh, 2000 uh 27 uh, 20, uh sorry 20 26 because the congress is every no 25 sorry it's every two years so it was in 23 so it will be 25. okay so uh that's i have to what i have to say today and we go on with the next speaker if i might because i will have uh, a class uh, soon uh, first of all, uh, hello everybody, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, it's my great pleasure to say a few words about the World Logic Day. Uh, so since Jean-Yves uh, invited Stanislav Krajewski and me uh, to uh, contribute to this great uh, initiative, uh, for five years we organized uh, the, the various events actually at our Faculty of Philosophy. University of Warsaw, and this time it was something special because this time two ladies did it, and it was not restricted to our university, but it was, let's say, national. So, Professor Kordula Świętorzecka, I hope you all know her, together with uh, Professor Anna Brożek from our faculty, organized a, a lot of events, starting starting with uh, unveiling the plate for for the room of Jan Łukasiewicz, then the conference on Polish logician uh, Kazimierz Ajdukiewicz, then uh, the yeah. celebration of the Łukasiewicz Award on Sunday, uh, and finally two days when many logic departments uh, presented themselves and their research. And it was fantastic because this time it really worked like something unifying, uniting uh, people, uh, connecting them. So uh, this great idea of the logic day, uh, in fact, had a side effect or maybe the proper effect, which was to, to connect people uh, in our country. Uh, so uh, thank you, Jean-Louis, for this initiative. <laughs> I think it was really good. Uh, and, and one word I wanted to add, because perhaps then I will not have a chance, uh, is about some future challenges for logic and religion. I just wanted to shortly uh, mention one, uh, I think, interesting research area, uh, which, which is using uh, logic and religion uh, in testing AI chatbots. Uh, so it was my recent research. Uh, this semester, I also uh, had a seminar with students. And it, I, I just want to tell you that it really works. I, um, maybe there will be occasion to show you some, some slides. Uh, some examples, uh, but I also saw that apart from the general question about AI, uh, can it be conscious, uh, what about its will, uh, it shows that logic with, in connection with religion can be really helpful, helpful to test uh, um, cool. how they are powerful, the, the, the performance of many language models. So I just wanted to share, share this experience. And again, thank you, Jean for this great initiative, which really gives fruits, as you see. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Wachi. Now I want to invite um, Professor Agni, please. 
Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, so thank you very much, Anif, for organizing this event. Uh, well, I decided to speak about the past events and the ones that I was present uh, at because I joined the LARA um, scientific committee, then organizing committee and, and the board uh, around two years ago. Um, so um, the third one that I was present at was in Varanasi at BHU in India, and I'm very happy to see uh, some of the speakers that were there as well, uh, like Professor Mukherjee, who is now uh, Asha Mukherjee, who is here in the audience. Hello, Asha. And uh, Monika Novakowska as well. So uh, this edition was very special, uh, as, especially for me, because uh, I uh, co organize um, uh, I organize a workshop on Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and logic. Uh, within that Congress and um, at the next one, which was in uh, Romania, in Sinaya, uh, I also had a workshop on argumentation in the world religious tradition and including legal, legal traditions. So uh, I'm very grateful to be a board member of uh, LARA and uh, contribute in the way um, that we organize these events as well as webinars. Um, that no, do not just focus on logic um, understood in one way, but it's many types of logic and in connection to religion, uh, it's about diversity and inclusion of various religious uh, uh, traditions, uh, religious uh, cultures and traditions uh, from across the world. And I think this is very important in the context of the World Logic Day uh, to emphasize this point. So these are a couple of my words. Thank you so much, Agni. Thanks so much, Agni. Uh, now let me invite um, Professor Anand. Um, please go ahead, Anand. Okay. Um, um, thank you very much, Anis, for organizing this. I'm very happy and honored to be here on Logic Day. Um, my primary um, goals right now are to actually sort of spearhead the organization of the 2025 Congress that will supposedly occur somewhere either in Northern California or Southern California. The current update that I have is that there is an opportunity to house it at San Francisco State University, which is actually very much central to the city of San Francisco. So it's a good location and it's by the beach also. Or to try and do something at the University of California, Los Angeles. Um, I'm sort of working somewhat more with UCLA right now because I'm teaching there also, trying to get some sort of insight about how much they might want Laura to be present there in 2025 as an associated or affiliated conference. I have some confirmation from San Francisco State University that there is housing available uh, through the dormitories. If we were able to do it there, unfortunately, it's also difficult to find out which one of these institutions uh, really has the manpower to help us put together the actual details of the specific location. So there's like the financial part, um, <clears throat> and then there's the, the structural sort of implementation part. Uh, it sounds like UCLA actually might have some money they're willing to give us to help put it together there if they decide they want to support Alara. Um, um, uh, San Francisco State University, I'm not sure that there's much money they're offering us to do it there. We're rather paying them to use their location um, in order to have the event. We're still looking for people to be keynote speakers and things like that. I think Jean Yves is working on you know, identifying some of the main people we want to invite, just like we've always had in the past. So that's kind of like what I'm mostly thinking about. And then uh, this year, in the beginning of the first half of the year, I have two projects that I'm finishing up. One is on um, the Nyaya theory of argumentation for the Routledge Handbook of Argumentation Theory. I'm finishing up my piece on that. And then there's another longstanding project that I'm finishing up on the relationship between Carnap's principle of tolerance, which governs the construction of logical systems and Indian philosophy of logic, specifically the Jain tradition and the Nyaya tradition in relationship to Carnap's. So I'm finishing up both of those by June. So that's basically what I'm thinking about in the area of logic. Happy World Logic Day. Go logic. Very good, Anand. Thank you so much for your participation. Let me now invite uh, Stan. Please, Stan, go ahead. 
Yes, hello. Uh, there is little to add uh, about Warsaw because Margin was speaking about that, but let me emphasize one thing, namely, uh, this was really for the first time an occasion, the logic, the day of logic, to for various logicians from various cities in, in Poland to to come together and to have a, a joint event. So I think this has proven uh, a bit unexpectedly to me, I must say, that the idea that Jean you had to have this word the day of logic, well, logic day, is really very fruitful, much more fruitful than I thought. And it, uh, it, I think it should be, it, it's a good um, uh, example and maybe people from other places could also, other countries, could also think about having this as an occasion to to somehow do something together with various people because there's not so, there are not so many uh, uh, occasions to do things together, even in the in the field of logic. So uh, so in this sense, it's it's I think it's it's growing in a, going in a very good direction. Thanks. Thank you so much, Stan. Um, before I, I pass the word to you, I um, just want to add something. Um, from my, my own perspective, um, I one thing that I, that I want to uh, emphasize for the kind of work that we are proposing here is to make um, the connection between logic and religion as interdisciplinary as what? possible. So we had um, the with, um, several different opportunities to have the um, scholars from various different, not only different fields, but also from different traditions. So we, and we, you could see that in the list of webinars that we had here, but also in the presentations, in all of the events that we, um, we organized in the past few years. So we had, uh, um, uh, we had lots of philosophers um, from different uh, traditions, um, history of philosophy, lots of analytic philosophy, of course, a lot of analytic philosophy of religion. Um, but also we had an effort to bring scholars from different countries. So we have a rich, um, um, a rich um, arena of scholars from different parts of the world. Uh, that's why um, we organized these webinars at 4 p.m. Um, Central Europe, um, because we want to make sure to have um, as many people as possible from different parts of the world. Uh, we are trying to work uh, to make sure to, uh, we could uh, give access um, to uh, the audience in China, for example, because right now they don't have access to Zoom, right? So we are working right now to find a new tool that would allow these people to attend these webinars as well. Another thing that I want to add is the need to um, is the need to um, bring scholars from other fields as well. Uh, and the fields that I, I'm thinking about, that I'm currently thinking about, uh, it's the history of religion um, uh, and also uh, theologians. Now, my own effort to do that was to bring one theologian last last year in a, for to speak in our webinar, which is uh, was. Um, uh, John Walton from Wheaton College. He's actually a Bible scholar. Um, so here we want to connect mathematicians, uh, philosophers, but also theologians as well. Uh, typically theology is understood as the science of God. So I think that they can add a lot, especially with the connection between science and religion. Um, we also want to, uh, to speak a lot with um, uh, specialists in religious studies. So as you can see, our main efforts is to make the connection of logic and religion as interdisciplinary as possible. And I hope that in the next events, uh, not only the webinars, but also the World Congress, um, and as well as other events that we might have in future, we want to bring as much as these people as possible. So thank you so much. Uh, after that note, I just want to invite uh, Caroline for, uh, to speak as well. Thank you so much. Um, hello, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here. Um, and thank you for mentioning about the Zoom because I would love to invite the colleagues from mainland China 
and it was actually a, an issue for me when I was lecturing there. Um, I prepared a, a brief PPT for our friends who were here and don't know what is Laura. And I think they raised some questions that I used to have as well. What is this about uh, logic and religion? It sounds so uh, contradictory. So I prepared a, a very brief um, introduction for them. I'm, I'm trying to find how to share the screen. Uh, I can't share the screen. The host disabled screen sharing. There is a message let here. Me, uh, let me help you, uh, Carl, please. Um, OK, go ahead. Try now. Yes. So of course, this is only for people who are our friends invited here and don't know what this is about. Um, so what is the World Logic Day? And everything that I have learned from my professor, Geneve Bézieux, uh, and all these congresses, which are like a, a symphony of diverse minds, as you have mentioned, it's like an orchestra with uh, several people from diverse uh, fields of faith and diverse uh, um, walks of knowledge. And uh, my teacher, Jean-Yves Bézieux, he created this World Logic Day. And uh, it is his brainchild, which was embraced by UNESCO. And this global observance transcends academic boundaries. And for me, that has a special significance because I never thought about working with logicians, but because Professor Bezio is such a polymath, I met him in uh, 2018 during a Congress of uh, cult um, Culture and Creativity in which he joined several artists. And I am an artist myself as well. And uh, as he explains, the aims of this World Logic Day is a way of catalysts for innovation and the celebration of universal language of human intellect. And uh, he also talks about this day as a form of enlightening the public about the historic significance and conceptual importance, expanding the social viewpoint and uh, what is it about? It is, is the intellectual growth of everyone, is the nurturing spirit of humanity, and it fosters a culture of peace. And the uh, human intellect. And uh, I saw uh, several letters supporting this World Logic Day. And as an example, I took this one from the project of Humanities, Arts and Society, in which uh, Margaret Berrier says that now more than ever within cultures divided by fundamental so social and economic uncertainties, creativity should favor access to knowledge and to humanistic values and principles to, of respect for, for all differences, seeking to connect individuals and worldwide problems with emerging solutions. So I think this really captures the spirit of this beautiful organization. She says, we must encourage cross-cultural knowledge and comprehension and to enhance participation and collaboration with, beyond borders on global issues such as education, environmental conscience and ethics, and uh, because of this, I would like to thank you all so much for members of Laura for introducing me to this wonderful organization, embracing the logic of unity and for believing the power of dialogue, which is so important nowadays. So, and now I would like to pass the word to my, my teacher or I don't know how to stop sharing this screen. Uh. Thank you so much, Carol. Um, please, Geneves, um, it's your, or, now your turn. Um, I just want to remind all of you, if you had any questions for us uh, about the kind of work that we are doing uh, or anything at all in the connection between logic and religion, 
um, or uh, or about our celebration of the uh, World Logic Day, you are welcome to interact. We also want to see your thoughts. What do you what do you think? If you have any suggestions for us, you are more than welcome to do that. Uh, please, Janice. Yeah, thank you very much, Caroline. Uh, and we have the project to organize uh, one of the future edition of the World Congress on Logic and Origin in, uh, in China, whether it is in, in uh, Taiwan or somewhere else. <laughs> we will see. We already start to discuss about that. As we know, the situation is not necessarily easy to make all the people to unite all the people, but we hope that the situation will improve and uh, we will find a good solution. And I think, and this is one important of our project, is that uh, Logical Knowledge is to uh, unify people, to unite people. So I guess if we organize a big Congress on this topic in uh, in the Chinese countries, it will be a, a great uh, success. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Now I want to uh, invite people, um, uh, whoever wants to, um, add anything or make su making suggestions for us, asking questions for our project, the particularities of our project, please feel free to raise your hand or ask us to the chat. You are welcome to do that here, please. If anyone. Um, on World Logic Day, it is also imperative that we raise our voice against warfare and mindless killing of innocent people. Can you please rephrase your question, please? Can you, uh, uh, I couldn't speak, uh, I couldn't hear you well. Can you repeat, please? Yeah, um, basically, uh, should a logic operate on a verified realm as an academic discipline, or could logic have a more political, real life dimension where we could have a more organic, embodied, lived understanding of logic in such a way that it would oppose against mindless violence like that is happening today uh, so if... Gandhi, so, so Gandhi like for instance uh, from a southern perspective he proposed certain formulations like search for truth and non-violence as the basis of his logic which he called satyagraha in such a way that Logic doesn't become cold and mathematical that is governed by symbolic logic, but on the other hand, becomes more lived and organic. So I'm not I'm not sure if I understood the question correctly. So I'm going to ask any of my colleagues um if they did um if not, I will just um, ask you to um, either to write in the chest or to try again. Um, but anyone? Uh... Yeah, can I can I can I raise something here? Uh, let, awesome. let me just make sure that I didn't miss uh, uh, this last question. So what I want what I want to propose is speak I... on about the last question. Oh please, yeah, I'm going oh, please. To speak then to... you can do that. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, I'm very glad to be part of this uh, 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 logic and religion group and um, uh, happy World Logic Day to everybody here. Uh, I'm very happy to see some of my friends uh, who are on, uh, who spoke here, Ananda Vedda and uh, Agni. Um, yeah, in fact, uh, I also had a similar question, which is uh, just now asked. Uh, uh, and this is about, uh, you know, logic, uh, as we have, we were talking, Caroline, I think, has talked about that logic uh, is uh, sort of uh, basically concerned with the kind of universal language, a symbolic, I mean, it could be symbolic or it could be um, 
uh, kind of uh, natural language. So, uh, the, but the task of a logician traditionally, I mean, including Karnap and uh, they, they were that you uh, sort of develop a kind of uh, uh, artificial language, uh, which is uh, from the natural language. Now, uh, which is actually, you know, which does not have the ambiguities of natural language. Now, coming to that point, basically, and um, I mean, like just the last question which we had right now, the natural language uh, supposed to have a lot of ambiguities. And uh, at the same time, the, uh, the natural language is the language of the people, uh, the language of uh, the per people who are living the religion and living the culture, for example. So somebody said that there seems to be a contradiction between logic and, uh, and uh, religion. Uh, and I suppose this is perhaps uh, the point, you know, that on the one hand, we want to have logic, on the other hand, we want to have religion, which is basically lived kind of experience, which most of the uh, traditions have, uh, including the culture. So how do we, uh, you know, sort of uh, combine the two and where do we uh, sort of draw the line, if at all we want to draw? So that's the question. Okay. Now having, uh, I mean, that even I have the same question, but having said that, uh, for example, I mean, uh, logic and AI, artificial intelligence. Now, this is completely a kind of computational uh, uh, discourse, which we have right now as an AI. And logic uh, seems to be, I mean, I started a logician, <laughs> I mean, as a logic student right from the beginning. And then I could see the limitations of logic and I shifted to many, drifted to many other, uh, other uh, branches of uh, philosophy. And uh, the mainly uh, the reason was that logic was too symbolic. I mean, like uh, uh, the life uh, which is concerned with the daily life and the kind of problems we have been talking about uh, are really missed if you are talking about symbolic logic and AI. So um, this is perhaps the problem which we need to uh, uh, sort of ask ourselves. That's one thing. So where do we draw the line between logic and AI? logic and religion, et cetera, et cetera. The second point I would like to talk about is that uh, I have also been uh, part of uh, history of religions for a long time, almost for uh, two decades. And um, I mean, I was regularly sort of participant of the history of religions uh, uh, association uh, over all over the world. And uh, also I am right now a member of uh, World Congress of Philosophy as a, a steering committee member of uh, uh, FISP. Now, he, there too, I mean, well, like this year's uh, uh, World Congress, uh, which we're going to have, uh, World Congress of Philosophy we're going, going to have in Rome uh, in 2024, 20, uh, August. Now, the theme of uh, uh, that, uh, I mean, similar, uh, the kind of concern which we were talking about, some of the speakers have just now talked about, the crossing the boundaries of religion, culture, and having a dialogue, that's a, extremely important. And that's perhaps uh, what the most of these uh, uh, associations are addressing too. Therefore, I suppose uh, we might uh, think of joining hands with some of these organizations, like somebody says the history of religion. I would also suggest that uh, World Congress of Religion, uh, World Congress of Philosophy, perhaps would also be uh, you know, another platform which actually we might jointly uh, think of collaborating with them and also invite them, not only just theologians, but also uh, uh, some of the philosophers which have been working in this area. And philosophy and religion, uh, I have been writing on this relation between philosophy and religion, especially in Indian context. Uh, so I think that will be interesting to work on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. A wonderful, what a wonderful question. That was really good. Um, I want, before I, I ask if any of my colleagues want to speak, uh, because this question was actually kind of not very direct to one particular person because it was touching about um, many of the things that everyone spoke. So I want to add um, my own, um, my own um, current thinking on why we need, for example, history of, of, of scholars working on history of religions, right? So I think Many of uh, many things that we are working nowadays, especially on taste arguments right now, they started 
in um, ancient times and also very in, uh, particular, in particular uh, in medieval philosophy with um, 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 in the history of Christianity, medieval uh, medieval philosophy, mm -hmm. also um, also in other religious traditions as well as Islam, for example, we had lots of what is called philosophical theology, also called like natural theology, the attempts to make arguments for God's existence. Now there was a kind of um, uh, in contemporary analytic philosophy uh, resurgence of now atheists uh, trying to make arguments and not in this this time against uh, God's existence, but also lots of, of these trying to make a contemporary case for the existence of God. So I think we have a lot to learn from the history of religions and how uh, religions try to contribute to answer uh, uh, the question whether or not um, there is a God, for example, which is pretty much connected to, uh, to, the, um, to um, the connection between uh, logic and religion, because uh, maybe one of the main part of this connection is to to search for God in his nature, right? I mean, also uh, his relationship with with people, if there if there is any God, right? So I think that is a it's a valuable lesson we can learn that we can learn with with um, scholars working uh, on history of religions. Uh, we have a lot to learn from them, but that's just part of this question. And I want to hear from others as well. Um, if they part, of, it, of course, that we, this question was kind of like a broad question. And um, as far as I, I do understood, um, I think it was also an attempt to draw a line between uh, right uh, between how um, we get from from uh, religion to logic, right? And how can you draw a line between logic and religion, right? So please, if anyone wants to, uh, any of my colleagues want to speak about that, feel free to do that, please. I think there is a question uh, from uh, Margarita. Please. Um, yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm uh, located in Ithaca, New York, the United States. Uh, I would like to talk, uh, thank you all from the bottom of my heart for organizing these logic days. Uh, we, we, uh, and maybe I should say, I come from the discipline of strategic management. So I uh, entered as a practitioner uh, who was uh, trying to work with the idea of the future because this in management it's all about how to be prepared for the future and and that brings us to the distinction between the present the past and the future augustine uh, william james uh, but i always get back to this the topic of logic and so uh my my question for you and i apologize if it has already been discussed but I found it very helpful to think of logic just as an operation that starts or is centered on the, on the material act of drawing a distinction. So I'm thinking of a pen and a paper, uh, and there's a human being that takes the pen and, and, and draws a distinction on paper, and that that is uh, kind of the, the center of... Uh, the discipline of logic, so to speak. And now one can go back to Aristotle and actually see him making similar arguments. But one can also go back to the, the first distinction as it is being discussed in many religious, like in the beginning there was the written word. Or one can go back to the chimpanzees and imagine that they started drawing a distinction in the sand and uh, that it somehow the, the mind or the brain began working differently. So I, I'm curious how many uh, people are interested in pursuing uh, this sort of line. And I should give a little nod to George Spencer Brown. I don't know how familiar everyone with him is. He, he published something in the 60s that he literally say, start with drawing a distinction. Uh, but what he didn't do, and and, I, and then I shut up, he, he didn't say that he started with making a logical <laughs> operation. He merely connected it with mathematics. And I think that a lot of problems in the world today are the result of people mixing logic with mathematics. Uh, thank you. And I look 
for your feedback, of course, because I'm here to hear what you think about this. Yeah, sure. Anyone of my colleagues wants to comment on this question? I think uh, Rohini would like to comment on this issue. I'm sorry, Carol. Can you repeat, please? Rohini would like to talk about this issue, I believe. Okay. Um. And I, okay. So where is him? Uh, and then I'll pass the word the middle, to but, uh, the microphone is off. Rohini, can you can you turn on yeah, your yeah, microphone? Sorry. Okay. Am I am I audible? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Rohini Pragya and I'm speaking from Ladno, Jain Vashabharti University. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not talking anything about the former speaker, but I just want to talk from a Jain perspective about the relationship between uh, logic and religion, the way the Jain perspective takes. So in our times, so one of the great uh, religious thinker, Parampujya Acharya Mahaprigaji, he, he, he gave a two kind of distinction that uh, Hetu Gamya and a Hetu Gamya. Religion is a set of two things, which is logically compatible and which is not logically compatible or which goes beyond logic. So when we, when we talk about logic and religion, it is a one whole part that, uh, that incorporates the set of uh, uh, togetherness of logic and religion. So uh, from this perspective, there is no contradiction between logic and religion. And there is a whole category which goes beyond logic, which he says as, which is told as a uh, hetu gamya, that is, which is beyond logic. So religion and logic are compatible for one whole category. And it, it there is something beyond this combination of logic and religion from a gene perspective. This is a short uh, view that I want to share with all of you. I really appreciate your input on this. That was very uh, um, informative. Thank you so much. Uh, let me ask uh, Anand, he also wants to contribute with this, please. Oh, yeah, just to generalize the small um, point, um, <clears throat> at least I mean, I would say, at least in English, and when we are translating across languages such as Sanskrit, Hindi, Bengali, Gujarati, any number of languages, Prakrit, uh, there's just a general feature of the word, let's just talk in the English case first, where there's just more than one sense in which the term is historically used. This is very well recognized in the authoritative introductions to logic that are out there. So I myself in prior work and in, in, in this own group in a paper I presented at the Oriental Logic Session in Iran discussed that in fact, it's sometimes difficult to understand all the ways in which the term logic has been used in Western philosophy and translated over and to find a unique term in Sanskrit, <laughs> it's difficult. But you can, for certain words that uh, come up, uh, hetu being one of them, anumana being another one, uh, uh, sadhya being another one, paksha being another one, but it's difficult. Uh, and so I think if we're asking questions of compatibility, as I would often just tell anyone in, in, in like any situation, it's better to at least do partial um, semantic parsing that is, you know, logic subscript one understood this way may be incompatible with religion subscript one understood this way. And then we can systematically go through in a logical way, <laughs> in another sense of the word logic, and sort of see like which ones, you know, sort of butt heads against each other, you know. And so I, I would be inclined to think that um, it's likely to find that there are substantive uses perhaps one that Rohini just spoke of, actually, uh, of the term logic under translation, where um, its understanding with a certain conception of religion is per very well, it's consistent and it makes perfect sense. Then there will be other uses, I think, of the word logic, where it might be hard to see what the relation is. So one well understood notion of how we use the word logic is that it's 
a, a formal language, right? And so by the notion of what we mean by formality, it will be the case that unless we understand the word of God as prescribed in certain doctrines as a formal language, you might think, I don't know what the relationship here is between talking about C++ as a formal language and talking about um, divine revelation, but maybe there could be. So I think there might be closer and more distant uses under translation of these terms in different languages. So that was just an elementary point I wanted to make that sometimes I think it just helps to um, semantically give minimal sort of glosses that help see what might be the friction point or, or not. Thank you very much. Sorry to take up so much time. Thank you so much, Anand. That was very informative input. Thank you so much. Um, if no one wants to add anything, uh, I have a question. We have a question in the chat, and that's a very important question, actually. Um, um, Paul asks, um, perhaps someone could address how the causes of discrimination and possible solutions are inferred in universities uh, and religions? Anyone want to, um, wants to, uh, I, yeah, please go ahead. If I may, yes, when I uh, introduce logic as drawing a distinction, like that is something one does. So there's no language necessary and it's observable. Everyone can see when uh, someone draws a distinction, at least people that are in the vicinity, but as a thought experiment, uh, many you, I think every human can relate to it. Now, uh, I in my uh, searches I came across the book of Alan Watts, The Two Hands of God, in which it's a meditation on the binary, as I understand it, binary thinking. And um, I think that book is extremely important because he makes there the, the comment that something happened in the Mediterranean, uh, that uh, once... Uh, just the the distinction was made and as a footnote there are two ways to think of a distinction one is as a cut like plato at eh, the butcher who's cutting nature as it joins but also aristotle who gives us a circle and and a circle in the sand and then you erase it and then you do a different circle and then you experiment so what well, Alan Watts is pointing out, or what he says, like in one line, and then he uh, lets go of it, is that something happened in the Mediterranean that the two halves didn't find each other again. And he said, like all the other cultures, just the two halves that were separated, they somehow found a way to coexist and actually have friendly feelings towards each other. But in the Mediterranean, something happened that they turned in the force of uh, ho horrific evil and and whatever, a beatic goodness. And that binary, which is a logical uh, operation, so to say, that binary got reified and, 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 and stories were told around it. And so we see that now in the university also. Uh, but I think the... Th that makes me think again about the value of logic. If you think purely about logic, it's it's a tool, and what one does with it can be good or or evil. <laughs> so, so it, it allows me to separate uh, the two issues. Like one is thinking logically, is making distinctions, uh, but on the other one is what do we do with them and. And I think the psychoanalytic literature, I also have discovered there is a branch in Scotland uh, that started in the last century that, that thinks of uh, babies as logical beings and is basically saying the way we treat our little babies, that has consequences. And so if we want to do something about what's happening in the university, we, we shouldn't focus on the university. We should focus on the mothers and the fathers and the family structure. And sorry, that's my, my perhaps not too short answer, but still, thank you for. Well, uh, I really appreciate Margaret your your input. That was that was very uh, helpful. That was very good too. Um, please, uh, Asha, how also wants to uh, comment something? Please yeah. go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to add to Margaret what Margaret has said. In fact, uh, you know, I mean, gender is uh, another aspect, you know, which has been part of the de de discrimination. Uh, uh, all over the world. And, um, you know, I mean, the feminist logicians 
uh, have been talking about this, you know, dyadic logic, which uh, sort of binary logic, which actually divides uh, uh, the uh, the women and men. So uh, the feminist thought and feminist logic, I think, would be also a kind of logic, you know, which is uh, uh, developed uh, in last uh, five decades or so. Uh, at least, uh, you know, to say that. And I suppose uh, that logic, feminist logic would also be uh, one one way of uh, avoiding the discrimination and uh, uh, and also bringing the uh, chair you know, bring me to, to the, uh, this forum. I think that would be very interesting to work on and include uh, the feminist logicians uh, to sort of to, to, to put, you know, to bring them and bring the richness of uh, uh, their logic uh, to this forum. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, that was very helpful too. Yeah. Oh, by the way, in Brazil, we have um, uh, people not exactly working on philosophy of religion, but we have like uh, a group of uh, feminists, uh, um, uh, analytic philosophers, uh, especially a group called women's, uh, women working on analytic philosophy, they try, they do that very, uh, uh, they, they try to work on this very effort of trying to break this, um, this discrimination, this, uh, this, um, this so high distinction between the work done by men and women trying to make efforts to um, show and to popularize as well as to, um, to help and contribute with the work done a lot of wonderful work uh, done by by women too you know yeah so thank you so much for that um anyone else want to contribute with uh anything please i just wanted to say thank you asha for this suggestion maybe we could have a workshop on that uh, team during the next uh, edition of the world congress and and invite a speaker for the webinar uh, if you are, have some suggestions of who could to uh, maybe invite or or uh, include in the workshop uh, that would be very helpful as well thank you yeah, thank you so yes, much, uh, uh, Agni. Uh, I, I think I agreed a lot with what Agni just said. I think we will just take it uh, as, as a suggestion and we will work hard to mm -hmm. to um, to try to to do our, our part on this effort of, you know, uh, diminish the discrimination as well as increasing uh, and making our efforts to increase um, uh, not only just interdisciplinary, uh, work, as I said in the beginning, but also trying to draw the attention of other scholars from other fields, also people, uh, um, also people like uh, from unrepresented groups, you know, um, for example, women and other other groups as well. So I appreciate that suggestion. We'll certainly work on that as well. Um, I just want to ask uh, uh, Janib, so he will finish our session today. We has been about one hour. That was very productive. I think we have lots of things um, um, to do this year. Um, and I just appreciate your participation as well as your inputs. Please, Janine, let's uh, uh, um, end uh, the session with your input. Well, uh, thank you, Aziz. Um, we have to, <laughs> so let's talk about the future projects. Many of them, you know, we already uh, we were talking about the next uh, uh, World Congress on Logic and Origin in, South, in California, probably in San Francisco, 2025. There are also uh, different kind of projects. Ricardo uh, Silves, um, the president of LA, is not here today because he had some help for him, but he also will organize a Congress in Rio in 2025. And uh, also myself, I uh, intend to organize a Congress on uh, World Congress on Paradise in 2025 in Switzerland. So we have a lot of projects going on. And uh, the webinar, of course, so uh, Assis will, will uh, present the next session will be in February. And we want to invite uh, people to make suggestions for the next session of our webinar, which is a monthly webinar. Uh, maybe Caroline, uh, she, is, she can invite people, more people from uh, China to take part to this, uh, to present some talk at this webinar. 
would be very nice because we really want to have people from all places in the world and all, all kind of uh, tendency. Caroline, do you have an idea of what can uh, you, you know, some people that you can invite for the future? Um, yes, uh, I was thinking about Sukang. And uh, I think we could have some round table with Bomo. He presented previously on Chinese philosophy. And I also saw that someone, I think Peter asked here uh, in the chat, if uh, Chinese and Arabic uh, thought are more symbolic than logic, um, I, sorry, not Peter, um, Faze Muller. And uh, I think this would be an interesting subject because um, it is true that most people know a lot about the Taoist and the Confucian schools of thought, but uh, we have the school of names and another way of calling them is the logicians. They are less known but they have becoming more and more important to understand how Chinese uh, logicians used to think. So I think this would be an interesting issue. We, we could use uh, another platform. Someone here suggested Jitsi. Um, I know that Microsoft Teams also works. Um, I, and also I will take the opportunity to thank you so much for this vibrant discussion. Thank you, Caroline. So, uh, Aziz, maybe you can, uh, to uh, close the session, maybe you can present the next uh, webinar uh, of uh, in the next month, in February. Of Please. course, yeah. So the uh, next section... And you want to say something also, yeah. Oh, sorry. Say again, James. I, I think I need to raise her hand. So maybe she has to say Oh, yeah, of course. Something. Yeah. Um, oh, Agnes just like uh, giving a uh, round of. Oh, no, I was just clapping. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, That's uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so um, I just want to, before I finish the, the, uh, the session, I just want to um, call your attention for our next webinar. We'll take place. Uh, let me just verify that, uh, which will take place. So next session of the webinar will take place next month on the 22, 22nd. And the speaker will be Professor Ivan Falls. He's a retired professor of philosophy uh, at the University of Iowa. He has done like um, extensive work on philosophy of religion. He will be talking about sensible animism. So, and I'll be the chair. So we invite you to also attend the, the, uh, that session. Um, and I hope to have um, the same uh, um, inputs that, that we had today that was very productive. Thank you so much uh, uh, to each of all of you and see you uh, next month. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.